I find painting very, very hard work. I would never say that I enjoy it, really. It's a compulsion more than anything else. I think if you're creative, you have to create. When I actually sit before the blank piece of paper, I swallow hard. It's always the making the first mark that is always the thing, because once you made the first mark, then you'll go back because you become interested, you see. So I'd, down the years, I always used to make tricks with myself that immediately after breakfast, I would make a mark on the paper, you see. And then I would basically just formulate the character and develop it out from the character what the character would be likely to be wearing. I often found that I'd start with the head and then I'd kind of develop background and sort of atmosphere and then work into it as I'm concentrating and refining the image. But I've always worked in gouache. I don't actually use pencil as such, although for working drawings I always drew those up. But I use a combination of gouache and fine watercolour, because if you're brave enough, you can get a very glowing effect by using gouache as a base medium and washed watercolour over the top, so it sort of goes like stained glass. The, the watercolour is transparent, and, and but you do need to kind of keep your nerves steady because you can wreck the, the, the gouache underneath. So you have to kind of just gauge that. I'm always torn between wanting to keep everything nice and free and bold and then going very minute. I kind of <laughs> have a tendency to become very oo sable, but I try to stop myself from doing that. I think that the artists that I most admire, artists like Degas and Velasquez and Goya and those sort of artists, used what I think is a sort of ideal combination of great freedom with tightness, to have a kind of fresh boldness to the paint, but also to use brushwork to bring the thing together. Doing the research for me was always really the sort of high octane part of design. So that was always, for me, the main motivating factor, really, to be able to do the research. I met Dame Joan on stage at Covent Garden, and I was 19 and very full of myself. Joan asked me what I was doing, so I said I was studying theatre design. So she said, well, what did you think of the designs of this performance? So, can you bear it? I pulled a face. <laughs> So she gave me a very stern look and said, well, if you think you're so clever, send me some of your designs, you see. So, and that, and that sort of terminated the, the interview. I produced a series of designs with, with my sort of fantasy of what, how I would design for her if I was in that position. The upshot was that this very important world-famous singer nevertheless found time to write me uh, a personal letter full of encouragement and advice about how I could best work with singers and that singers weren't necessarily ideally built physically and I'd need to adjust my design. So it was a very, very extraordinary thing for her to do, really. People used to ask me, what was it like designing for Dame Joan? And I always say, well, it's a doddle. She was the least of my problems. But when she went on stage... Everybody had plenty to say. And Richard Bonning was particularly <laughs> vociferous in his condemnation. Fortunately, he tended to like my work, but I mean, he was notorious. I preferred things to be a bit tidier and to use cut and judicious use of decoration to create line, to make the thing have more style rather than just piling it all on. So I tried to kind of control that, but Richard and I used to have battles about this. Their particular take on design was that they liked historical-based design. They didn't really want trickery at all. You know, they didn't want her in a black leather trench coat clutching a machine gun or something. You know, that wasn't what they thought it was a good idea. And indeed, it wouldn't have been. So I basically, my designs were always historically based. So I sort of made a kind of sort of mix. 
mix of historical accuracy, but also a sort of bit of original take on what was required. I wanted things to have a sort of, I think, a sort of elegance about them. That was my aim. So this was the Lucrezia Borgia at Covent Garden. I had a bit of a challenge with this because it couldn't really be done on any historical reference because the only supposed picture of, of Lucrezia Borgia is uh, she's naked to the waist with, with kind of uh, snaky blonde hair and I thought that wasn't a good look for Dame Joan. So I sort of created this rich Renaissance number which was what she sang the final scene and then expired in. So this is the Lucia that I did um, originally in 1980 for the Australian Opera. Um, after that, Dame Joan wore these costumes whenever she sang the role, you know, at the Metropolitan Opera, Covent Garden, wherever. The thinking behind it was to make a rather different effect, because till that point she'd always worn a rather fitted garment that was sort of like the underwear, under, under clothes, under her bridal gown. And I thought that she should have this very floaty garment because it would create a good mood and um, give a sense of movement and lightness as she was uh, busy going mad. And uh, so this is what she did. She went mad, rushing about in a lot of gauze. This was the daughter of the regiment that I did um, the Australian Opera. It was just to make a witty take on a fairly sort of historically correct Vivendier's outfit. I had to be quite clever with the cutting and things because she obviously wasn't a tiny little snappy little vivandier, so I tried to do very bold cutting and give her a sense of sort of wit about it. I'm just trying to get the line on the centre part of Joan's face, it's got a very particular modelling which is distinctive and um, if you don't get it right, it doesn't look like her. I actually can do a mean caricature of her. <laughs> I'm rather good at doing a, a caricature of her, but actually to try and get a sort of properly sensitive reading of her face, which is what I aspire to do, and vary it. You know, obviously one doesn't want from design to design just the same old face crunched out each time, so I, I obviously have to find different ways of giving it a, a sort of mood. The drawing that I did for the Royal Collection, I think, was the one that was the most accurate of her, as a study of her. I, w I wasn't then doing a, an idealised version, I was actually doing what she really looked like. And I think I got some of the slightly bleak look that she could have. Well, that's it to this point. I always feel I could carry on forever with these things. But at some point you have to call it a day, and I suppose that's it. I'm going to call it a day.